Who's there? Is all our company here? Here is a marvelous, convenient place for our rehearsal. This shall be our stage. This, a tiring house. You now, call forth the actors. Masters, here are your parts. And I hope here's a play fitted. Aha! My chief humor is for a tyrant. This will call for some tears in the true performing of it. <laughs> ah! Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of our players do, I have leave the town crier spoke these lines. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand, thus. But use all gently, for in the very torrent, tempest, and, as I may say, the whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Nay! Faith! Let me not play a woman! I have a beard coming! <laughs> you shall play it in a mask, or you may speak as small as you will. Be not too tame neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with a special observance. Will step not the modesty of nature, for anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end both at the first and now was and is to hold as it were a mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, and the very age and body of the time is form and pressure. Oh, there be players that I have seen play and heard others praise, and that highly that have so strutted and bellowed that I had thought nature's journeymen had made men and not made them well, they imitated humanity so abominably. I, I hope we have reformed that indifferently with us, sir. Oh, reform it altogether, and let those that play the clowns speak no more than is set down for them. It's villainous and shows a pitiful ambition in the fool that uses it. Go, make you ready. By moonlight will we rehearse. In the meanwhile, I will draw up such a bill of properties, such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. Meet presently, and every man look where is part. Answer me, stand and unfold yourself! For long live the king! Bernardo! Me? You come as carefully upon your hour! It is now struck twelve! Get thee to bed, Francisco! This relief! Much thanks! Tis bitter cold, and I am sick at heart! Have you had quiet watch? Not a mouse stirring! Well, get thee to bed! If you do meet Marcellus and Horatio, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste! Give you good night. Who hath relieved you? Bernardo. Half my place. Give you good night. Bernardo. Say, what is Horatio there? A piece of him. Yeah, welcome, Horatio. What? Welcome, good Marcellus. Hath this thing come again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says to spread our fantasy. Will not let belief take hold of him. Touching this dreaded sight, twice seen of us. Therefore, I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night, that if again this apparition come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Tush! Tush! It will not appear! Oh, let us once again assail your ears, that are so fortified against our story what we have two nights seen. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward of the pole had made his course to illumine that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell then beating right my...
where it comes again. In the same figure like the king that's dead. Thou art a scholar. Speak to it, Horatio. It's not like the king market, Horatio. Question it, Horatio. It's like it, it harrows me with fear and wonder. Everybody he spoke to. What art thou that usurps this time of night? By heaven I charge thee, speak. It is offended. Stay. Speak. Speak, I charge thee, speak. It is gone and will not answer. Before my God, I, I might not disbelieve without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself. It is strange. Thus twice before and jump at this dead hour, with the martial stalk of thee gone by our watch. In what particular thought to work, I know not. But in the gross and scope of my opinion, this bode some strange eruption to our state. And mote it is to trouble the mind's eye. In the most high and palmy state of Rome, a little ere the mightiest Julius fell. The graves stood tenantless, and the sheeted dead did squeak and gibber in the Roman streets. Behold, lo, where it comes again. I'll cross it. That would blast me. Stay, illusion. If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily foreknowing may avoid, oh, speak. Speak of it. Stay and speak! Stop it, Marcellus! Shall I strike it? Do if it will not stand! Tis here! Tis here! Tis gone! Do it wrong, being so majestical, to offer it the show of violence, for it is as the air invulnerable, and our vein blows malicious mockery. I was about to speak when the cock crew. And then it started like a, a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. I have heard the cock. That is the trumpet to the moon. Doffed with his lofty and shrill-sounding throat, awake the god of day, and at his warning, whether in sea or fire, in earth or air, the extravagant and erring spirit hies to his confine. And of the truth therein, this present object made probation. But look, the moon in russet mantle clad Walks o'er the door of yon high eastern hill. Break we a watch up. And by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death the memory be green, and that it has befitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted into one brow of woe, yet so far hath discretion fought with nature, that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress of this warlike state, have we, as twere, with a defeated joy, with one auspicious and one dropping eye, with mirth in funeral and dirge in marriage, in equal scale, weighing both delight and dole, taken to wife? <laughs> <laughs> Nor have we here in Bard your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along for all. Our thanks. And now. Leotis, what is the news with you? You told us of some suit, Leotis. What is it? Come, man, you cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. <clears throat> My dread lord, you will leave in favour to return to France, from whence, though willingly, I came to Denmark to show my duty to your coronation. Yet now, I must confess, that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? <clears throat> he hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. 
Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine, and thy best graces spend it at thy will. And now, our cousin Hamlet, and our son, a little more than kin, and less than kind. How is it the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted colour off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not, for ever, with thy veiled lids, seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou notice common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. I, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, together with all forms, moods, shows of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passeth show these, but the trappings and the suits of woe. It is sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these mourning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. It is unmanly grief. We pray you throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note, you are the most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears, his son do I impart toward you. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, Wittenberg it is most retrograde to our desire. We bend you, beseech you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eyes. Our chiefest courtier, our cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray you, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I will in all my best obey you, madam. Why, tis a loving and a fair. <laughs> Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. Come away. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh God, God, how weary, stale, flat and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Find, find, tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature, possess it merely. That it should come to this, but two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king that was to this, Hyperion to a satyr. So loving to my mother that he might not between the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth. Must I remember why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on? And yet within a month, I let not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month, or ere those shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's body, like Niobe, all tears. Why she, even she, oh God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer. 
married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I, to Hercules. Within a month, a yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes she married. O oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I'm glad to see you well. Horatio, or do I forget myself? Say, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Sir, my good friend, <laughs> I'll change that name with you, but what made you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus. My good lord. I'm glad to see you, but what in fate make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? A truant disposition, good my lord. Against yourself? I know you are no truant, but what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep, ere you depart. My lord, I, I came to see your father's funeral. Huh. Pray thee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Drift, drift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. My father. He thinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? The king, your father. The king, my father. I season your admiration for a while with an attentive ear. Till I may deliver upon the witness of this gentleman. This marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear. Two nights together had this gentleman, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead wasted middle of the night when thus encountered. A figure, like your father, walked slow and stately by them. Now this to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did. And I with them the third night kept the watch. Whereas they had delivered, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more light. Where was this? Upon the platform where we watched. And did you not speak to it? My lord, I did. But answer made it none. Tis very strange. As I do live, my honoured lord, tis true. And we do think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed. Indeed. But this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. I will watch tonight. Perchance it will walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it. Though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace upon the platform. Twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. I'll do to your, your honour. Your love is mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. But the night will come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth will whelm them to men's eyes. So embarked, farewell, and sister, as winds give benefit and convoys assistant, do not sleep. But let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet, and the trifling of his favour, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, 
a violet in the youth, a primy nature, forward, not lasting, sweet, not permanent, the perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. No more but so. Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own. For he is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself. For on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state. Therefore must his choice be circumscribed unto the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. Then, if he says he loves you, fits your wisdom so far to believe it, or for he in his particular act and place may give his saying deed, which is no further than the main voice of Denmark goes with all. Then where what loss your honor may sustain, if with too credent ear you list his songs, or lose your heart, or chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity? <laughs> fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my sister. Keep you in the rear of your affection, out of the shot and danger of desire. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep, as watchman to my heart. But good my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do. Show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. <laughs> Fear me not. I stay too long. Oh, but here my father comes. Yet, here. Laertes. A ball, a ball for shame. The wind sits in the shoulders of your sail and you are stayed for. There. My blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory see thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy farm with entertainment of each new hatch unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but preserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich. Not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Hmm? Neither a borrower nor lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing sees in this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time invites you. Go, your servants tend. Farewell, Ophelia. And remember well what I said to you. Tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. <laughs> Farewell. Mm. What is it, Ophelia, he hath said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Ah. Marry, well bethought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you. And you yourself have of your own audience been most free and bounteous. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord of late, made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? You speak like a green girl unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby, that you have taken these tenders for true pay which are not sterling. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honourable fashion. Aye. Fashion, you may call it. Go to Go to. And hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Aye. 
springes to catch woodcocks. I do know. When the blood burns, our prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, giving more light than heat, you must not take for fire. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment's leisure as to talk or give words with the Lord Hamlet? Look to it. I charge you, come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. Oh, yeah, my truthly, it is very cold. Uh, nipping at an eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed. I heard it not. Well, there it draws near the season, wherein the spirit health is wont to walk. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of health. O oh, goblin damned! Bring me the airs from heaven or blasts from hell! Be thy intense wicked or charitable! Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I will call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Day, now answer me! Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell. Why thy canonized bones, hursed in death, have burst their cerements? Why the sepulchre wherein we saw thee quietly interned hath oped his ponderous and marbled jaws to cast thee up again? Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? It, it, it beckons you to go away with it. You alone. What if it tempt him towards the flood? Or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles o'er his base into the sea and there assume some other horrible form which might deprive his sovereignty of reason and draw him into madness? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow him. Where wilt thou lead me? Speak! I am bound to hear! I am thy father's spirit! Doomed for a certain term to walk the night! And for the day, confined to fast in fires! Till that the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt! and purged away, but that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, and make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, O oh list. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder, 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 most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural, it is given out that sleeping in mine orchard, a serpent stung me. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that had sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle, I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, so to seduce, won to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, 
what a falling off was there. But soft, methinks I sent it the morning air brief, let me be, sleeping in mine orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed ebon and in a vial, and in the porches of mine ear did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver it causes through the natural gates and alleys of the body, and with a sudden vigour doth posset and curd, like eager droppings into milk, the thin and wholesome blood. So did it mine. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown of queen at once dispatched, cut off even in a blossom of my sin, no reckoning made, but sent to mine account with all mine imperfections on my head. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven and to those thorns which in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the matin to be near and begins to pale his unaffectual fire. But you, but you, Hamlet, remember me. What news, my lord? Oh, wonderful. Could my lord tell it? No, you'll reveal it. Not I, my lord, by heaven, nor I, my lord. Can heart of man once think it, but you'll be secret? I, by heaven, my lord. There's ne'er a villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an arrant knave. There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Why, right, you are in the right, and so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it for that we shake hands and part. You, as your business and desire, shall point you for. Every man has business and desire, such as it is. And for mine own poor part, look you, I'll go pray. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I am sorry they offend you heartily. Yes, faith heartily. There's no offence, my lord. Yes! By St. Patrick, but there is Horatio and much offence too. Touching this vision here, it is an honest ghost. That let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us will master it as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars and soldiers, Give me one poor request. What is it, my lord? We will. Never to speak of this that you have seen. My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Upon my blade. We have sworn, my lord, already. Swear! Propose the oath, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come. Here, as before, never so help you mercy. How strange or odd so e'er I bear myself, as I hereafter perchance shall think it meet to put an antic disposition on, that you at such time seeing me never shall with arms encumbered thus, or with this head shake, or by pronouncing of some doubtful phrase as, well, 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 we know, and we would, and if we could, or by such ambiguous giving out, to note that you know aught of me. This do swear. Swear. Let us go in together. And still your fingers on your lips, I pray. O oh, all you host of heaven. O oh, earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? Oh, fie. Hold my heart. And you, my sinews. Grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee? I, thou poor ghost, whilst memory holds a seat in this distracted globe, remember thee, yea, from the tables of my memory. I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all sores of books, all forms, all precious past that youth and observation copied there. And thy commandment, 
all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter, yes, by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, villain, villain, smiling. Damn it, villain. My tables, meet it as I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, Uncle, there you are. Now, to my word, it is a due, a due, remember me. I have sworn it. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite. That ever I was born to set it right. Money on these notes, Ronaldo. I will, my lord. Uh, you shall do marvellous wisely, good Ronaldo. Before you visit him to make inquire of his behaviour. My lord, I did intend it. Marry. Well said. Very well said. Look you, sir. Inquire me first what Danes are in Paris. And how and who, what means, where they keep, what company. At what expense? And finding by this encompassment and drift of question that they do know my son, come you more nearer. Take you as it were some distant knowledge of him. As that, I know his father and his friends, and in part him. You mark this, Renaldo. Aye, very good, my lord. And in part him. But, but you may say, not well. But if it be he, I mean, he's very wild, addicted, so and so. But well, it's gaming, my lord. Aye. Offensing, drinking, swearing, quarreling, grabbing. You may go so far. My lord, that would dishonor him. Faith. No, as, as you may season it in the charge. Oh, my good lord. Wherefore should you do this? Aye, my lord, I would know that. Marie, sir, here's my drift. You laying these slight sallies on my son, your party in converse, him you would sound, having ever seen in the predominant crimes the youth you breathe of guilty. Now be assured, he closes with you in this consequence. Good sir, or sir, or friend, or gentleman, according to the phrase or the addition of man and country. Oh, very good, my lord. And then, sir, as it is, he, what was I about to say? By the mass, I was about to say something. Where did I leave? Uh, uh, closes in the consequence. Uh, closes in the consequence. Aye, he closes thus. I know the gentleman, I saw him yesterday, or the other day, or then or then, with such or such. And as you say, there was a gaming. There, falling out of tennis, or perchance I saw him enter such a house of sale. The delicate a brothel, or so forth. See now? Your bait of falsehood takes this carp of truth. And thus do we of wisdom and of reach, by indirections, find directions out. You have me, have you not? My lord, I have. Copy with you. Well, my lord. Farewell. Observe his inclination in yourself. Good, my lord. And let him ply his music. Well, my lord. Farewell. Ah. Feel it, 
what's the matter? Alas, my lord, I've been so affrighted. With what? In the name of God. My lord, as I was sewing in my chamber, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unbraced, and with a look so piteous in purport as if he had been lucid out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love? My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear him. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last a little shaking of mine arm and thrice his head thus waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound that it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go. And with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. For out of doors he went without their help, and to the last, bended their light on me. Come, go with me. I will go seek the king. And this is the very ecstasy of love. What? Have you given him any hard words of me? No, my good lord, but as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his access to me. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed and judgment I had not quoted him. Go, we will, to the king. This must be known, which we in kept close might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love. Thou still hast been the father of good news? Have I, my lord? And I do think, or else this brain of mine hunts not the trail of policy so sure as it has used to do, that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That I do long to hear. He tells me, my sweet queen, that he have found the head and source of all your son's distemper. Oh, I doubt it is no other but the maid. His father's death and our were hasty marriage. Ah, well, we shall sift it. Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Moreover, that we much did long to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation, so call it, since nor the exterior nor the inward man resembles that it was. What it should be, more than his father's death, that thus have put him so much from the understanding of himself, I cannot dream of. I entreat you both that being of so young days brought up with him that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time, so by your companies to draw him on to pleasures and to gather so much as of occasion you may glean whether aught to us unknown afflicts him thus that opened lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and sure I am to men there are not living, to whom he more adheres. Both your majesties, might by the sovereign power you have of us put your dread pleasures more to command than to entreaty? But we both obey, and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. Thank you, Rosencrantz and gentle Guildenstern. Thank you, Guildenstern and gentle Rosencrantz. Ah. And I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. Aye, amen. <clears throat> my liege and madam, and to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night, night, and time is time, when well, nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad, call I it. For to define true madness, what is it? But to be nothing else but mad, but let that go. More matter, with less 
art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. That he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity. And pity tis, tis true, a foolish figure. But farewell it, for I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him then. Now remains that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather say the cause of this defect. For this effect, defective comes by cause. Thus it remains, and the remainder thus. I have a daughter, have, while she is mine, who in a duty and obedience mark, have given me this. I gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That is an ill phrase, a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase, but you shall hear. Thus, in an excellent white bosom. Came this from Hamlet to her. But, madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. Ah, doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. How hath she received his love? What do you think of me? As a man, faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. But what might you think? When I had seen this hot love on the wing as I perceived it. And I must tell you that before my daughter told me. What might you Oh, my dear majesty, your queen here think. If I had given my heart a winking, mute and dumb, or looked upon this love with idle sight, what might you think? Now I went round to work, and my young mistress thus I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince, out of my star this must not be. And then I precepts gave her, that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens, which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he, repulsed, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a watch, thence into a weakness, thence into a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now he raves, and all we mourn for. Think you, tis this? It may be, very likely. Take this from this, if this be otherwise. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind the narrows, then mark the encounter. We will try it. But look, where well, sadly the poor wretch comes. Good Gertrude, leave us. Her father and myself, lawful aspires, shall so bestow ourselves that seeing unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge if it be the affliction of his love or no that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do hope your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I wish your virtues will bring him to his wonted way again. To both your honours. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, what you hear? Read upon this book that show of such an exercise may colour your loneliness. Does not draw mine. Question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartache. 
and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep, perchance. To dream. I there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare botkin? Who would fathers bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death. The undiscovered country, from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus, the native hue of resolution is sickly dour with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard, their currents turn awry. and lose the name of action. Soft you now. The fair Ophelia. Nymph. From thy orisons be all my sins remembered. But my lord, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you well. Well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I've longed long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, <coughs> not I. I never gave you aught. My honoured lord, you know right well you did. And with them, words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again. But to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? I <coughs> truly. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are arrant knaves or believe none of us who go their ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him! That he may pay the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Well, then you sweet heavens. If thou wilt marry, marry a fool. 
I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Go thy ways to an nunnery, and quickly do farewell. Heavenly powers restore him. Or if thou wilt marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. God hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, and you amble, and you lisp, and you nickname God's creatures, and you make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to honor more of it. It hath made me mad. I say, we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery. Go! What oh, noble mind is here, Urthrum? The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, I, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mould of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down. And I, of ladies most deject and wretched, that have sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of blown youth, blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Oh, now, Ophelia, you need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it. Madness. He does not that way tend. Nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul, or which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch and the discourse will be some danger. Go away, I do beseech you. I'll board him presently, give me leave. How does my good lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. What I, my lord? Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. I, sir. To be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man, picked out of ten thousand. Well, that's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, being a god-kissing Carrion, have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. For conception is a blessing, but not as your daughter may conceive. Friend, look to it. I'll say you by that, still harping on my daughter. Yet, he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. Oh, he is far gone, far gone. And truly in my youth, I suffered much extremity for love. Very near this, I will speak with him again. What do you read, my lord? Words. <laughs> words, words. What? Is the matter, my lord? Between whom? I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Oh. Slanders, sir. For the satirical slave, as says here, that old men have grey beards, their faces wrinkled, 
their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. Uh, for you yourself, sir, should be as old as I am, if like a crab, you could go backward. <laughs> Though this be madness, yet there's method in it. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave. Oh, indeed. That is out of the air. How pregnant is replies. My lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all, except my life, except my life, except my life. <laughs> Thank you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. My honoured lord. My most dear lord. My excellent good friends. How dost thou? Rosencrantz, Guildenstern. Good lads. How do ye both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. On fortune's cap we're not the very button. Nor the soles of her shoe. Neither, my lord. Mm, then you live about her waist. <laughs> or in the middle of her favours. <laughs> Faith her privates we. <laughs> In the secret parts of fortune, <laughs> most true, she is a strumpet. <laughs> mm. <laughs> What's your news? None, my lord, but the world's grown honest. Oh, then is doomsday near. But your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Uh, why? Then is the world one. Aye, goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons. Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. Why? Then tis none to you. For there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why then, your ambition makes it one. It is too narrow for your mind. Oh, God. I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself the king of infinite space. Were it not that I uh, have bad dreams. Which dreams indeed are ambition? For the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. A dream itself is but a shadow. Show me to the court, for by my fear I cannot reason. We'll, we'll wait, wait upon, upon you. No, such matter. I will not sort you with the rest of my servants. But, in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. <laughs> Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, come. Deal justly with me. Come, come, nay, speak! Oh! What, what, what should we say, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose. I know you were sent for, and there is a kind of confession in your looks. Your modesty have a bark enough to colour. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. <laughs> to, to what end, my lord? That you must teach me, but let me conjure you by the light of our fellowship. Be even and direct with me whether you are sent for or no. What say you? Nay, then, I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery 
and your secrecy to the king and queen molt no feather. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. For gone all custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile commentary. This most excellent canopy, the air. Look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestic roof fretted with golden fire. Why, it appears no other thing to me but a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. Vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals, and yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? dust. Man delights not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nor woman neither. Though by your smiling, you seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? Uh, uh, to think, my lord. If you delight not in man, then what Lenten entertainment shall the players receive from you? We noted them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. What players are they? Even those you were wont to take delight in, the tragedians of the city. Mm. He that plays the king shall be welcome. Uh, gentlemen, you are welcome. Come, your hands. You are welcome, but... My uncle, father, and aunt, mother, are deceived. In what, my dear lord? I am at mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. My friends, leave me till night. You are welcome to Elsinore. Good, my lord. Ah, my lord, I have news to tell you. Ah, my lord, I have news to tell you. <laughs> the actors are come hither, my lord. Buzz, buzz. Upon mine honour, then came each actor upon his ass. The best <laughs> actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral comical, historical pastoral, tragical historical, Tragical, comical, historical, pastoral, <laughs> scene individual, or poem unlimited, for the law of writ and the liberty, these are the only men. Oh, master! You are welcome. Oh, I'm glad to see you well. Come. We'll have a speech straight. Come, give us a taste of your quality. Come, a passionate speech. What speech, my lord? I heard thee speak me a speech once, but it was never acted. Or if it was, not above once, for the play... I remember, please not the million, it was caviar to the general. One speech in it I chiefly loved. It was Aeneas, tale to Dido, and thereof it especially where he speaks of Priam's slaughter. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see. Let me see. The rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast, it is not so. It, it begins with Pyrrhus. The rugged Pyrrhus. He whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the knight resemble when he lay, couched in the ominous horse, hath now his dread and black complexion, smeared with heraldry more dismal. Head to foot, now is he total gules, horribly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, with eyes like carbuncles. The hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam, seeks. 
So, proceed to you. Oh, God, my Lord, well spoken. With good accent and good discretion. And now, he finds him striking to shorter Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched, Pyrrhus at prime drives, in rage strikes wide, but with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls, for love, his sword which was declining and the milky head of Reverend Priam seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted tyrant Pyrrhus stood, as hush as death, so after Pyrrhus pause, her roused vengeance sets him newer work, and never did the Cyclops' hammers fall on Mars's armor forged for proof he turn, with less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. This is too long. It's up to the barbers with your beard. I pretty say on. He's for a jig or a tail of baldry or he sleeps. Say on. Come to Hecuba. But who or who had seen the mobile queen? Mobile queen. That's good. Shh. Mobile queen is good. Run barefoot up and down, threatening the flames with busy room. A cloud. Upon her head where late the diadem stood, for a robe, about her lank and all her teamed loins, a blanket in the alarm of fear caught up. But if the gods had seen her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamour that she made, unless things mortal move them not at all, would have made milks the burning eyes of heaven. And passion in the gods. Look whether he has not turned his colour or has tears in his eyes, I pray you. No more. It is well. And I thee speak out the rest soon. Good my lord, will you see the players well bestowed, do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the brief abstracts and chronicles of the time. After your death you better have a bad epitaph and their ill report while you live. My lord, I will use them according to their desert. God's body can man much better. Use every man after his desert, and who should escape whipping? Take him in. Come, sir. We'll hear a play tomorrow. Follow that lord, and look you. Mock him not. <laughs> Now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player, here but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage wand, tears in his eyes, distraction, in his aspect of broken voice, and his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit. And all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? Why? He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, make mad the guilty and appall the free, confound the ignorant, and amaze, indeed, the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing no, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a 
coward. Who calls me villain? Tweaks me by the nose? Gives me the lie in the throat as deep as to the lungs? Who does me this, hmm? For I should take it. For it cannot be but I am pigeon livid and lack gall to make oppression bitter. Or ere this, I should have fatted all the region tights with the slaves awful. Bloody, bawdy, villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindest villain, oh, vengeance! Why, what an ass am I? This is most brave, that I, the son of a dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell must like a whore and pack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab sky and <laughs> fire upon it foam. About my brain, I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the sea been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll taint him to the quick, if he but blench. I know my course. The spirit I have seen may be the devil, and the devil hath the power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my melancholy and my weakness abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The plays, the thing, wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. And can you by no drift of conference get from him why he puts on this confusion? He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sound, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof when we would bring him on to some confession of his true state. Did he receive you well? Most like a gentleman, but with much forcing of his disposition. Negative question, but of our demands most free in his reply. Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam. It so fell out that certain players we are wrought on the way. Of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. Tis most true. And he beseeched me to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. With all my heart. And it doth much delight me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose on to these delights. We, we shall, shall, my lord. Good Gertrude, leave us too. I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England. Haply the seas in countries different with variable objects shall expel this something settled matter in his brain whereon his heart still beating puts him thus from fashion of himself. What think you want? It shall do well. But yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. My lord, do as you please, but if you hold it fit, after the play, let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round with him, and I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of all the conference. If she find him not, to England send him or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. Shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. <laughs> How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent in faith. Of the chameleon's dish, I eat the air, promise Cran. <laughs> I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. 
These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. Come hither, my dear Hamlet, sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I meant my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. Did you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. Mm, it is a pleasant thought. What is, my lord? To lie between maids' legs. You are merry, my lord. Oh, aye. Aye, my lord. Oh, God. You're only jig maker. What should a man do but be merry? For look you, how cheerfully my mother looks. My father died within these two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. So long? Nay. Then if the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of sable tied. Two months ago. And not forgotten yet. Why, then there's hope. A great man's memory shall outlive his life for half a year. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. What means this, my lord? This means miching malacro. This means mischief. Tis brief, my lord. As woman's love. I'll mark the play. We shall know by this fellow. Ah, uh, uh, the players may not keep counsel. They'll tell all. <laughs> Full thirty times have passed in sacred bands since love our hearts and Hymen joined our hands. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us count again or ere love the earth. Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My operant powers their functions leave to do, and thou shalt live in this fair world behind, honoured, beloved, and happily one as kind. For husband shalt thou... Oh, confound the rest! Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first. A second time I kill my husband dead when second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe you think what now you speak, but we do determine oft we break. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord be dead. Nor earth to give me food, nor heaven light, sport and repose lock from me day and night. From here and hence pursue me lasting strife, if once a widow ever I be wife. Tis deeply sworn, sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull, and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain, and never come mischance between us twain. <laughs> Madam, I like you this play. The lady protests too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you read the argument? Is there no offence in it? No, no, no. They do but jest, poison in jest. No offence in the world. What do you call the play? The Mouse Trap. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You are as good as a chorus, my lord. Oh, I could interpret between you and your love if I could see the puppets dallying. You are keen, my lord, you are keen. It would cost you a groaning to take off my edge. The croaking raven doth bellow for revenge. Thoughts black, hands apt, drugs fit. And time agreeing, confederate season else, no creature seeing. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected with Hecate's van, thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and dire property on wholesome life usurp. Immediately it poisons him in the garden for his estate. You shall see anon how the murderer get the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What fight with false fire? How fares my lord? In our play! stricken dear, go weep, the heart and gall at play. Some must watch, while some must sleep. So 
runs the world away. Get me a fellowship in a cry of players. I'll take the ghost's word for a thousand pound. Come, some music, come the recorders. For if the king like not the comedy, why then belike, he like it not, but he come. Some music. <laughs> Good my lord, good my lord, good my lord! Vouchsafe me a word with you. Sir, oh, history. The king, sir, I thought of it. is in his retirement marvellous distemper. With drink, sir? No, my lord, rather with choler. Ah. Could my lord put your discourse into some frame and sound not so wildly from my affair? I am tame. Sir, pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. Nay, good my lord. If it shall please you to do me a wholesome answer, I'll do your mother's commandment. I cannot, sir. What, my lord? Make you a wholesome answer, my wits diseased. My mother, you say? Then thus she says your behaviour hath struck her into wonder and astonishment. Wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. In part, she desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We will obey. Will she ten times our mother? Have you any further trade with us? My lord, you once did love me. Hmm. So do I still, by these pickers and stealers. Good, my lord. Then what is your cause of distemper? You do surely bar the door upon your own liberties if you deny your griefs to your friends. Sir, I lack advancement. <laughs> How can that be, my lord, when you have the voice of the king himself for your succession in Denmark? Aye, sir, but while the grass grows... <laughs> The proverb is something musty. Why do you go about to recover the wind of me as if you would drive me into a toil? Oh, my lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. I beg you. Believe me, I cannot. I do beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. It is as easy as lying. Govern these vintages with your fingers and thumb, give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music. Look you, these are the stops. But these cannot I command to any utterance of harmony. I have not the skill. No, why now? <laughs> How unworthy a thing you would make of me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck out the very heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. <laughs> Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will, though you can fret me. You cannot play upon me. The queen would speak with you, and presently. I will come by and by. I'll be fooling to the top of my bent. I will come by and by. We, we will, will say, say so. so. By and by is easily said. It is now. The very witching time of night, when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on. Soft. Now to my mother. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. My tongue and soul in this be hypocrites. How in my words, so ever she be shent, to give them seals, never my soul consent. him not, nor stands it safe with us to let his madness range. Therefore prepare you. I, your commission, will forthwith dispatch, and he, to England, shall along with you. We will ourselves provide most holy and religious fear it is to keep those many, many bodies safe 
that live and feed upon your majesty. Arm you, I pray you, to this speedy voyage. For I will fetters put upon this fear which now goes too free-footed. We, we will, will haste us. My lord, he's going to his mother's closet. Behind the heiress I'll convey myself to hear the process. Fare you well, my liege. I'll call upon you ere you go to bed and tell you what I know. Thank you, good my lord. Oh, my offence is rank. It smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse on to brother's murder. Pray, can I not? Though inclination be as sharp as will, my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. And like a man to double business bound, I stand in pause where I shall first begin and both neglect. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Where to serves mercy? but to confront the visage of offence. And what's in prayer but this twofold force to be forestalled, ere we come to fall, or pardoned being down? Then I look up. My fault is past. But oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, mine own ambition, and my queen. May one be pardoned, and still retain the offence in the corrupted currents of this world. Offence's gilded hand may shove by justice, and oft is seen the wicked prize itself buys out the law. But tis not so above. There is no shuffling. There the action lies in his true nature. And we ourselves compelled, even to the teeth and foreheads of our faults, to give in evidence. What then? What rests? Try what repentance can. What can it not? Yet, what can it when one cannot repent? O oh, wretched state. O oh, bosom, black as death. O oh, limed soul, which struggling to be free art more engaged. Help angels, make a sense. Bow stubborn knees. And heart with strings of steel, be softer sinews of the newborn babe. All may yet be well. Now might I do it, mate. Now he is praying, and now I'll do it, and so... He goes to heaven. And so am I revenged? That would be scanned. A villain kills my father. And for that I, his sole son, do the same villain send to heaven? Oh, this is hire and salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly, full of bread, with all his crimes broad blown as flush as may. And how is for what it stands, who knows, save heaven? And am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul, when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No. When he is drunk asleep, all in his rage, all in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, at gaming, swearing, or about some act that hath no relish of salvation in it. Then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned and black as hell whereto it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up, my thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven go.
Lord's drink. Look you. Lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with. And that your grace hath screened and stood between much heat and him. I'll silence me even here. Pray you. Be round with him. Mother! I'll warrant you. Fear me not, withdraw. I hear him coming. Mother! Now, Mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Don't go, you question with a wicked tongue. Oh, now, Hamlet. What's the matter now? You forgot me. No? By the rude, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those you that can stay. Nay, sit down. You shall not go. You budge not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help! Help! Oh! Now a rat! Help! Dead! Dead for a like a dead! What hast thou done? I know not. Is it the king? The wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. What rash and bloody deed is a this? Bloody deed? Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? I, lady, t'was my word. Peace. Leave ringing of your hands and sit you down. And let me wring your heart. For so I shall, if it be made of penetrable stuff. What have I done? That thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me. Such an act that blurs the blush and grace of modesty. Cause virtue, hypocrite, makes marriage vows as false as Dice's oaths. I mean what act that roars so loud and thunders in the index. <coughs> Look here upon this picture. And on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow. Hyperion's curls, the, the front of Jove himself. And I, like Mars, to threaten and command. A combination and a form, indeed, where every god did seem to set his seal, to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband. Like a mildewed ear blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Hmm? Have you eyes? You cannot call it love. For at your age the heyday in the blood is tame. It's humble. It waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Eyes without feeling. Feeling without sight, ears without hands, or eyes spelling sounds all. And yet speak no more. You've chanced mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and grained spots as will not leave their tape. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an enceived bed, sealed in corruption, honeying and making no, love of the black and I. These words like daggers enter in my ear no more, sweet Hamlet. A murderer and a villain, a cut purse of the empire and the rule, that from the shelf the precious diadem stole and put it in no his pocket. More! A king of shreds and back. Save me, and hover over me with your wings, you heavenly gods. What would your gracious figure? Do you not come your tardy son to chide? That laughs in time and passion, let's go by the important acting of thy dread command. Do not forget, but look, amazement on thy mother sits. Speak to her hamlet, step between her and her fighting soul. How is it with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you? That you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air do hold discourse. Forth that your eyes, your spirits wildly pee. Oh, gentle son, 
upon the heat and flame of thy distemper, sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you look? On him. On him, look you how pale he glares. Do not look at me. Lest with his piteous action you convert my stern effects. Then what I have to do will want true color tears, perchance for blood. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all, yet all that is I see. Nor did you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Look now, where he steals away my father, where he goes now even out of the port. This, the very cottage of your brain. Oh, this bodiless creation, ecstasy, is very cunning. Ecstasy. My pulse, as yours, doth temperately keep time and makes as healthful music. Is not madness that I have uttered, mother? For love of grace lay not a flattering unction to your soul, whilst rank corruption mining all within infects unseen. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds. To make them rancor. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Throw away the worser part of it. And live the purer with the other half. Good night. But go not to mine uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. Refrain tonight. And that shall lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy. Once more, good night. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll bless you, beg of you. For this same Lord I do repent. But heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this and this with me. I will bestow him and answer well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins, the worse remains behind. What shall I do? Let not the bloat king tempt you to his bed, pinch wanton on your cheek, call you his mouse, and for a pair of reachy kisses make you to ravel all this matter out. But I essentially am not in madness, but mad in craft. Be thou assured, if words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I, uh, I must to England. You know that. I have forgot. It is so concluded on. This man shall set me pack. Good night, mother. I love. I love the guts into the neighbor room. Indeed, this council is now most still, most secret, and most grave. Who was in life a foolish prating knave? Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother. This matter of these signs, these profound heaves. He must translate, it's fit we understand it. 
Where is your son? Oh, my lord, what have I seen tonight? What, Gertrude? How does Hamlet? Bad as the sea and wind when both contend which is the mightier. In his lord estate, behind the arras, hearing something stir, whips out his blade and cries, A rat! A rat! And in his brainish apprehension kills this unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deed. It had been so with us had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all, to you, yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It shall be laid to us, whose providence should have kept short restraint and out of haunt this mad young man. Where has he gone? To draw apart the body he hath killed. Oh, whom his very madness, like some awe, among a mineral of metal space, shows itself pure. He weeps for what is done. Gertrude, come away. Oh, Guildenstern! The sun no sooner shall the mountains touch, but we shall ship him hence. And this vile deed we must, with all our majesty and skill, both countenance and excuse. Hamlet, in madness, hath Polonius slain. And from his mother's closet hath he dragged him. Go seek him out. Speak fair. And bring the body to the chapel. I pray you make haste in this. Come, Gertrude. We'll call up our wisest friends. And let them know both what we mean to do and what's untimely done. Oh, come away. My soul is full of discord and dismay. What have you done, my lord, with the dead body? Compounded it with dust! Where to skin? Tell us where tis they may take um, it thence and bear it to the chapel. Ah, do not believe it! Believe what? That I can keep your counsel and not mine own! Besides, to be demanded of a sponge? What replication should be made by the son of a king? Take me for a sponge, my ah. lord! Ay, sir, one that soaks up the king's countenance, his rewards, his authorities, but ah, such officers do the king best service in the end. He keeps them like an ape in the corner of his jaw, first mouthed to be last swallowed. Ah! When he needs what you have gleaned, tis but squeezing you. And sponge you shall be dry again. I understand ah, you not, my lord. Ah, I am glad of it, a knavish speech sleeps in a foolish ear. My lord, ah, you must tell us where the body is. The body is. is with the king, with the king's not with the body. The king's a thing! A thing, my lord! Of nothing! Ah, ah. Uh, How dangerous is it this man goes loose? Uh, Yet must not we put the strong lord on him. He's loved by the distracted multitude. And now what hath befallen? Where the dead body is bestowed, my lord, we cannot get from him. Now, Hamlet, where is Polonius? At supper. <laughs> At supper. Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are e'en at him now. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures else to fat us, and we fat ourselves for maggots. Alas, alas. Um, a man may fish with a worm that hath eat of a king, and eat of that fish that hath fed of that worm. What dost thou mean by this? Nothing, but to show how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven. <laughs> Send hither to see if your messengers find him not there. Seek him in the other place yourself. Um, Uh, 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 but if you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go seek him out. <sighs> Hamlet, this vile deed, for thine especial safety, which we do tender as dearly we grieve for that which thou hast done, must send thee with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself for England, 
for England. Hi, Hamlet. Good. So it is if thou knewest our purposes. I see a cherub that sees them. But come. For England. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh, so my mother. Follow him at foot, tent him with speed aboard. Delay it not, I'll have him hence tonight. And England, thou mayest not coldly set our sovereign purpose, the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England, for like the hectic in my blood he rages, and thou must cure me. Till I know it is done, whate'er my haps, my joys were near begun. Not speak with her. She is importunate, indeed distract. Her mood will need to be pitied. What would she have? Her speech is nothing. She speaks of her father, speaks things in doubt to carry but half sense. The good she was spoken with, for she may shrew dangerous conjectures in ill breeding minds. To my sick soul. A sin's true nature is, each toy seems a prologue to some great amiss. So full of artless jealousy is guilt, it spills itself in fearing to be spilt. Where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark? How now, Ophelia? <coughs> How should I your true love know from another one? By his cockled hat and star, and his sandal shoes. Sweet lady, what imports this song? Say it. Nay, pray you, mark. He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head a grass green turf. At his heels a stone. Hey, but Ophelia. Pray you, mark. White is shroud as the mouth look here, my lord. Blotted with sweet flowers that bewept to the grave did go with true love shower. How do you, pretty lady? Well, God yield ye. They say the owl was a baker's daughter. Lord, we know what we are, but not what we may be. God be at your table. Conceit upon her father. Pray you, let's have no words of this. But when they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day, all in the morning the time. And I am made at your window to be your valentine. And up he rose and donned his clothes and up the chamber door. That in a maid is that out a maid. Never depart more. Pretty Ophelia. Indeed. La, without an oath, I'll make an end on it. By gifts and by some charity, I lack and fly for shame. Young men will do it if they come to it, by cock they are to blame. Quoth she, before you tumbled me, you promised me to wait. And so had I done by yonder sun, thou hast not come to my place. How long she been this I hope all will be well. We must be patient. <laughs> but I cannot choose but weep to think that they should lay him in the cold ground. <laughs> My brother shall know of it. And so I thank you for your good counsels. Come, my coach. 
Good night, lady. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Well, her curse, give her a good watch, I pray you. This is the poison of deep grief. It springs all from her father's death. Oh, Gertrude, when sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. First her father slain, next your son gone, and he most violent author of his own just remove. The people muddied, sick and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers for good Polonius' death, and we have done but greenly in Hagamugga to inter him. For Ophelia divided from herself and her true purpose. And last, and as much containing as all these, her brother is in secret come from France, and wants not buzzers to infect his ear with pestilent speeches of his father's death. Oh, Gertrude. And what noise is this? How now? Say yourself, my lord. Young ladies in a rider's head will bear your offices. The rebel call him lord. They cry, choose we, Laertes, shall be king. Caps, hands, tongues, applaud it to the clouds, Laertes shall be king. Laertes king. Where is this king? Thou vile king, give me my father! Come leave, good Laertes. That drop of blood that's calm proclaims me bastard. What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. Gertrude, let him go. Speak, man. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. To hell allegiance, vows to the blackest devil, conscience and grace to the profoundest pit. I dare damnation. To this point I stand, that both the worlds I give to negligence. Let come what comes, only I'll be revenged most thoroughly for my father. Who shall stay you? My will, not all the worlds. Leontes, if you wish to know the certainty of your dear father's death, is it writ in your revenge that sweepstake you will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser? None but his enemies. How will you know them? To his good friends? Thus wide out my arms, and like the kind life-rendering pelican repast them with my blood. Why? Now you speak like a good child, and a true gentleman, that I am guiltless of your father's death and are most sensible in grief for it. It shall as level to your judgment pierce as day does to your eye. Before him death and scum appear, and in his grave when many tear. Oh, he dry up my brains. Tears seven times salt burn out the sense and virtue of mine eye. A rose of May. There's rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray, love, remember. And this pensies, that's for thoughts. Dear maid, kind sister, sweet Ophelia. Oh heavens, it is possible a young maid's wit should be as mortal as an old man's life. There's fennel for you, and columbine. There's rue for you, and here's some for me. We may call it Herba Grace on Sunday. You must wear your rue with a difference. <coughs> Hadst thou thy wits that didst proclaim revenge, could not move thus. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. Document of madness. Thoughts and remembrances fitting. They say he made a good end. Bonnie, sweet Robin, so my joy. Affliction, passion, hell me. itself. Really not Turns to me. favors and prettiness. No, no, please, no. Four Christian souls. I pray God. God be with me.
You see this, O oh God? Zeotes, I must commune with your grief, or you deny me right. Go but apart, make choice of whom your wisest friends you will, and they shall judge twixt you and me. If by direct or collateral hand they find us touched, we will our kingdom give, our life, our crown, and all that we call ours to you in satisfaction. But if not, be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Let it be so. And where the offense is, let the great axe fall. What are you never speak with me? Silence, sir! We have letters for you from the ambassador back for England. If your name be a ratio, as I let it know it is. Horatio. Ere we were two days old at sea, a pirate of very warlike appointment gave us chase. Finding ourselves to slow of sail, we put on a compelled valour, and in a grapple I boarded them. On the instant, they got clear of our ship, so I alone became the prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy. Let the king have this letter I have sent, and repair thou to me with as much speed as thou wouldst fly death. I have words to speak in thine ear that would make thee dumb. Rosencraft and Gildenstern hold their course for England. Of them I have much to tell thee. Neither than I was thine. Hamlet. Now must your conscience my acquaintance seal, and you must keep me in your heart for friend, sith you have heard, and with a knowing ear, that he that hath your noble father slain pursued my life. It well appears. But tell me this, why you proceeded not against these feats so crimeful and so capital in nature? Laertes, was your father dear to you, or are you the painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why I ask you this? Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake to prove yourself your father's son in deed more than in words. To cut his throat at the church. <laughs> no place else should murder sanctuaries. Will you be ruled by me? Aye, my lord. Hamlet returned shall know you. I'll come home. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence and wager on your head. He, being remiss, most generous and free from all contriving, will not peruse the foils, so with ease, or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unblunted, and in a pass of practice, requite him for your father. I'll do it. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank, so mortal that dip a knife in it, that where it draws blood, no cataplasm so rare can save the thing from death that is but scratched with all. I'll touch my point with this contagion, that if I gall him slightly, it may be his death. Let us further think on this. If this should fail, it were better not a say. Therefore this plot should have a back or second that might hold if this should blast in proof. Soft, let me see. I have a... When in your motion you are hot and dry, and that he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce, whereon but sipping, if he by chance escape your venom stick, our purpose may hold there. And as we keep... One woe doth tread upon another's heel. How fast they fall. The sisters drowned, ladies. Drowned? Where? There is a willow grows a slant of brook and shows his whole leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands did she come of crowflowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples that liberal shepherds do give a grosser name but our cold maids do dead men's fingers call. There. Upon the pendant bough, her coronet weeds, clambering to hang. An envious sliver broke, when down her weedy trophies and herself fell into the weeping brook. 
Her clothes spread wide. And mermaid like, a while they bore her up. This time she chanted snatches of old tunes, as one incapable of her own distress, or like a creature, native and endued unto that element. But long it would not be, till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from a melodious lay to muddy death. Yes, then she is drunk. 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 Too much of water hast thou, poor Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. And yet, let shape say what it will, when these are gone, and you, my lord, a speech of fire that fade would blaze, but this folly drowns it. Let us follow, Gertrude. So much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I, this will give it start again. In youth, when I did love, did love, me thought it was very sweet. To contract for the time, for I might be home, me thought that was nothing to me. Hath this fellow no feeling at his business, that he sings at grave-making? Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Whose grave's this, Sirrah? Mine, sir. Mm, I think it be thine, indeed, for thou liest in it. Thou liest out on it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. As for my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it, to be in it, and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. It will away again from me to you. <laughs> What man dost thou make it for? For no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Well, who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul. She's dead. How absolute the name is. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days in the year. I came to it that day our last King Hamlet overcame Portemrath. How long's that since? Can I tell that? Every fool can tell that. "'Twas the very day young Hamlet was born. "'He that is mad, sent into England. "'Why was he sent into England? "'Why, because he was mad. "'He'll recover his wits there. "'Or if he do not, it's no great matter there. "'Why? "'Twill not be seen in him there. "'There the men are as mad as he. "'How came he mad? "'Very strangely, they say. "'Well, how strangely? "'Faith, Ian with losing his wits. "'Upon what ground? "'Why, here in Denmark... How long shall a man lie in the earth ere he rot? Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, he'll last you some eight year or nine year. A tanner will last you nine year. Why he more than another? Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade that it will keep out water a great while, and your water is a sore decayer of your horse and dead body. Here's a skull now. This skull is laying in the earth three and twenty years. Whose skull's that? A horse and mad fellas it was. Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilent son for a mad rogue. He bought a flag and a reddish to my head once. The same skull, sir, as Yorick's skull. The king's jester. This in that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He had borne me on his back a thousand times. And now how abhorred in my imagination it is, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambles, your songs? Your flashes of merriment that were wont to set a table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Get thee to my lady's chamber and tell her to paint an inch thick. To this favour must she come. Make her laugh at that. Oh, good Horatio. To what base uses may we return? May not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander 
till he find it stopping a bunghole? It were to consider too curiously to consider so. No, faith. Alexander died. Mm. Alexander was buried. Mm. Alexander returneth to dust. The dust is earth. Of earth we make loam. Where to of that loam where he was converted might there not stop a beer barrel? Who comes here? Who is it they follow, and with such maimed rights? This stuff the token, the corpse they followed it with desperate hand would do its own life. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranted. Her death was doubtful, and what that great commander sways the order. She should in ground unsanctified have lodged till the last trumpet. Must they no more be done? No more be done. There in the grave. From a fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish knave, a ministering angel my sister shall be when thou liest howling. But the fair feel you. Sweets to the sweet. Farewell. I should have hoped thou hadst have been my Hamlet's wife. Thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not have strewed thy grave. Treble woe, fall ten times treble on that cursed head, whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off a while, till I have caught her in mine arms once more. What is he whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars to stand like wonder wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane! Devil take us! I think it's my throat! I will fight with him upon this theme! My son, what theme? I loved Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my son! Hear you, sir. Why do you use me thus? I loved you ever. But let that be. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. Dear Gertrude, set some watch over your son. There is a divinity that shapes our ends. Rough hew them how we will. That is most certain. Up from my cabin, my sea gown scarfed about me, in the dark groped I to find them out. Their grand commission, an exact command that on the view, no leisure baited, my head should be struck off. Is it possible? Here's the commission. Read it with more leisure. I sat me down, devised a new commission. An earnest conjuration from the king that on the view and knowing of these contents he should the bearers put to death, not striving time aloud. So Gild and Stern and Rose and Grant go to it. Why, man, they did make love to disappointment. They are not near my conscience. Why, what a king is this? Does it not, thinks thee, stand me now upon he that hath killed my king and whored my mother, popped in between the election and my hopes, thrown out his angle for my proper life, and with such cousinage. Is it not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm? But I am sorry, good Horatio, that to laities I forgot myself, for by the image of my cause I 
See the portraiture of his. Who comes here? Your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you. Dost um, know this waterfly? No, my good lord. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will receive it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. I pray you, put your bonnet, for its proper use is for the head. I thank your lordship. Tis very hot. No, 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 it is very cold. Uh, the wind is northerly. It is indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. And yet, methinks tis very hot and sultry for my complexion. <laughs> Exceedingly, my lord, tis very sultry. As it were, I cannot tell how, but my lord, his majesty bade me signify to you that he hath laid a great wager on your head. I pray you, sir, remember. Sir, you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is at his weapon. What's his weapon? Wapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons. But well, the king, sir, has wagered with him six Barbary horses, against the which he has imponed, as I take it, six French swords with their sides. Ah, six Barbary horses against six French swords. Now, that's the French bet against the Danish. Why is this imponed, as you put it? The king, sir, has laid that within a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits, and that it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. Well, how if I answer no? I mean, my lord, the opposition of your person in trial. I will walk here in the hall. Well, let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing the king hold his purpose. I will win for him, if I can. If not, I shall gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. Shall I deliver you, sir? Uh, to this effect, sir, after what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours. Yours. This lapwing runs away with a shell on his head. Oh, he did comply with his mother's dug before he sucked it. <laughs> you will lose this wager. Well, I do not think so. I have been in continual practice. I will win the odds. And yet, I cannot not think how ills all here about my heart. It is no matter. Nay, good my lord. It is but foolery. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall the repair hither and say, you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim was madness. So, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot mine arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, and do receive your offered love like love and will not wrong it. I humbly receive it. And will this brother's wager frankly play? Give them the foil, young Audrey. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? Very well, my lord, your grace. I play the odds on the weaker side. Oh, I think it not. I have seen you both. And since he is better, we have therefore odds. This one is too heavy. Let me see another. These foils are full of length. Aye, my good lord. Ah, oh, this likes me well. 
The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup an union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup. The king drinks to Hamlet. Ah, let's begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. One, no! Judgment! A hit! A very palpable hit! Well, again! Stay! Give me a drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Give him the cup. Uh, sit it by a while. I'll play this bout first. Come again. Uh, ah, another hit! <laughs> touch, a touch, I do confess! Ooh. Our son shall win! <laughs> His heart and scant of breath. Here, have it. Take oh. my napkin, rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy fortune. Good, Good madam. madam. <laughs> Gertrude, do not drink! I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. I'll hit him now, my lord. I think he'd not. It is almost against my conscience. It is too late. It is the poisoned cup. Come, Laertes, for the third. Do but dally. <laughs> Say so. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Nothing neither way. How about you now? <laughs> Come again. Treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unblunted and envenomed. Oh, the foul practice that turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poisoned. I can no more. The king, the king is to blame. The point, envenomed too. Then venom to thy work. Ah! Oh, help me, friends, I am but hurt. Is thy union here? No! Drink off this oh. potion, thou murderous damn ah. dame! Follow my mother! He is justly so. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched queen, adieu. Had I but time. Ah! As this fell sergeant, death is strict. In his arrest, oh, I could tell you, but let that be. I am dead. Horatio, thou livest. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. He is yet some liquor left. Give me the couplet. Go by heaven, I'll have it. Oh, good Horatio. What a wounded name. Things standing thus unknown will live behind me, if ever thou didst hold me in thy heart. Absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. The rest. 
silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest.